You're listening to The Experiment, Episode 2. It's dark, it's hard to focus, but after a while you remember. You are in your car at the side of the desert road. The sun has set, but the light from the gas station lights up some of the area. You stopped here at this small rest area on the other side of the gas station. A woman comes out from the toilet, heading to her car parked next to yours. You look at her. She's nice to look at, and you smile at her. Your eyes meet a man waiting in her car. He doesn't look happy. She get into the car, a new Lexus IS, or something close to it. It's hard to see in the dark. The man glares at you as they drive away. You look over to the gas station. You see an older man and a younger woman argue. She opens the door to a smaller car, and the man struggles with something. Is that... It's a body. You feel drowsy. You place the body in the back seat. The woman is already in the driver's seat. Then he quickly get in on the passenger side. The car pulls out from the gas station and it's heading east, the way you are going. Your eyes comes back to the other car. The one that was parked next to them on the other side. It's a Volvo 960. Same blue color and model as your car. Everyone seemed to drive a Volvo these days. Then it all comes back to you. You remember everything. That was you. Your body. The doctor and the nurse. Dr. Hall and Alicia West. At least that's what you remember her say. That's your car. You're suddenly fully awake. You feel a pain in your stomach. And your left eye feels strange. When you look in the mirror, you see a scar over your left eye, almost healed. When you lift up your shirt, there's a scar on the side of your abdomen, also almost healed. A bang on the hood makes you jump. An old man has just smashed down both of his fists on your hood. He's screaming something, and you recognize him. But he should be dead, eaten by those... those... things. It's suddenly darker. The lights from the gas station flickers. No, it's everything. The gas station, the rest area, it all flickers. It's gone. It's all gone. The old gas station ruin is there instead. You see the old yellow cab next to it. The one that you hid in the last time you were here. The creatures are lurking around in the shadow, drawing nearer. The man screams and comes up to the side. He's gonna open the door. Or worse, smash the window. What do you do? I'm in my car. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I was starting to feel happy that everything looks so normal and... And now it doesn't. No, it's upsetting. This is upsetting. I don't want to mess with this guy. Start my car. You start a car. It starts right away. Do I have gas in the car? Yeah. You have a full tank of gas. Okay. The man comes up to the side of your door. I'm gripping the steering wheel and I look at him, look at his face one last time and then I'm going to punch it. 
As you drive off, tell me which way you go, east or west. East. You take one last look towards the gas station and it flickers back to the large station. You see a man leave the store, you recognize him and you notice that he looks back at you. Can you tell me about your nemesis and why you are enemies? It's him. An enemy for me is more of an academic situation. What is he doing here? There's another guy that I used to be friends with, college, and I'm pretty certain he's in the same business that I was in. Only, I think he takes pleasure in some of that dark stuff that kind of freaked me out. He's, I mean, he's always been a bit strange, and I keep seeing his name pop up more and more, and now he's at this gas station that I'm at? Yeah. What the hell? I want you to roll uh, for disadvantage, Nemesis. Ten. Ten. You notice that he looks back at you and he throws a sandwich away and jumps into his car. You think he saw you. He starts the car and start to drive out from the gas station. Of course he saw me. Everything flickers again and the newer gas station is gone. Your nemesis is gone and the old gas station is back. You see the old man dash over the road behind you towards the gas station and the yellow cab. I want you to roll act under pressure as you speed away. That's not good. It's less than a nine, six minus, it's like a four. You leave the gas station and the old man behind you. Your car loses the grip some and you, you're almost turned around but you, you manage to get it back on the road and, and you hit the gas and you're off. After a few miles you calm down a bit and you slow down to normal speed. There seems to be no one around, no one in front of you on the road or behind you. No one seems to chase you. I want you to roll another disadvantage roll for obsession and tell us about it. Let's uh, see, uh, the roll is, man, I am on it. Eight? Eight, yeah. You become obsessed. Is it, uh, you have the thumb drive? Uh, do you have a computer or papers or anything that you want to take a look at now that you feel a little bit safe? Yeah, I'm going to pull over immediately as soon as I can find a spot just off the edge of the road and get my laptop out. The dark desert is gone. It seems like you're on the normal desert road or highway now. There's no cracks and you see stars and, and it's uh, not as dark. You start to feel calm. You can tell us uh, about your obsession, what you do. Well, the thing that interests me the most is what's happening to me. And then as soon as I have this moment, I see that man. And so I, I have to look in those places where I've seen him his name come up before so i'm gonna use my i'm gonna have to get on the dark net i think so that i can get the scoop yeah you can roll a, a reason for that and see what you find reason i need to pick a number for reason let's make it a three yeah nice an obsession uh four plus a five is a nine with a plus three thank god gives me a 12 you start uh, to look around and you see his uh, his name on uh, things that you have just uh, looked at and uh, copied here and there that you didn't notice before. He seems to be involved in something that uh, you have found. Uh, you're not sure how, but you, you see his name on several of the documents, but you don't know what part he have in all of this. The speakers in the car crackles. The light flickers on on the radio. You hear static noise from it and a familiar voice as the darkness comes back around you. You motherfucker! I told you to get the fuck out! The speakers almost burst as his voice is heard through them. The yellow cab is suddenly near, and in high speed it crashes into your side. The last thing you hear is, Get the fuck out! This is my road! Darkness. Everything goes black. I want you to tell me about your father, your dead father. Was he a good man? Where did you grow up? Was he around? No, he was not around. My dad was uh, an alcoholic. Him and mom split up when I was three. 
I, I didn't even see him. He, I think he was a truck driver. I used to lie about him when I was a kid tell my friends that he was like a, an archaeologist overseas, make up stories. You hear his uh, voice next to you, or as you as you remember his voice from when you were little. Metropolis, such wonders. It's your father's voice beside you. You are on a street. You have been here before. It's near where you grew up. Where was it? Well, I grew up in Jersey City. Yeah. Well, just outside Jersey City. In those days, it's suburbs now. Something is off. The buildings are wrong. They have uh, metal facades. Rusty and with strange symbols carved into them. You see geometric shapes as well as free lines going in and out from them. Not connected. They are dr on the buildings. Your father say, I have watched you. Your time is strange. You live outside the illusion. You look up at the man with your father's voice. He's tall. He stands almost eight feet above the ground. The suit he wears sits badly on him. It's too large for his slender body, but at the same time too short for his length. His forearms are too long and you see lacerations all over them. Nails and spikes pushed into his flesh as well as razor blades. His arms wrapped with barbed wire. I have added something. Something that will help you open up to this world, he says. As you look up to his face, you see that it, it is a mask, a flesh mask. It sits over his real face, like a second skin, fastened with hooks on the side of his skull. He motions down to the ground with one of his hands, a hand with black long nails. When you look down, you notice that you wade through sharp, barbed wire. It cuts into your flesh as you walk, and your pants are in shreds up to your knees. Open wounds and so much blood. You shouldn't be able to walk, but you do. And you feel nothing. You are not even scared. You feel nothing, nothing at all. Here we are. The man put a hand on your shoulder. You stand in front of a black door in an alleyway, a silver circle inlaid in the center of the door two feet across. In the middle of it a copper triangle, upside down. The man with your father's voice speaks a few strange words. Asgarö sento springa, turil kshashiodra. The symbol shimmers and the door opens. The man leads you through several corridors and up a few stairs. You enter a small room, an old kitchen. It's where you grew up, now a ruin, filled with dust and broken furniture. You look down at your mangled legs as the man show you to a chair. He sits down on the opposite side of the old kitchen table. You have questions. I'm here to answer. If you ask the right ones, he waits for you to speak. Why did you bring me here? So that you can see the real world, not your fantasy world that you are a prisoner in, my son. I'm not sure why he uses my father's voice and calls me his son, but I am not convinced that this thing is my father. Why do you need me to see this world? Because this is where you are gonna live. You and the others. The other subjects. He doesn't look anything like your father, by the way. It's just a voice. I'm, I, this, I must be, this is like a dream. I must be having a nightmare or a, a hallucination or something. I certainly do not want to uh, live in this world. Everything around you flickers, and with every flicker you feel incredible pain in your legs. When the darkness and this room is back, the pain is completely gone. But when it's your old kitchen, where you see your, your mother at the stove, you are a child, and your legs are incredibly painful, ripped open. Then the darkness is back, and the, this man looks at you. What did you see? he asks. Why do you have my dad's voice? 
I am your dad. Don't you recognize your father? I have a new body, but I, I still have my mind, my powers. You have it too, don't you know? I don't know if I know what he's talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Explain it to me. I might be too early, but I don't think so. You have, you have seen things. What, what did you see on the screen when you encrypted that message? What did it say? What did they let loose up in the north? Has it, has it found you yet? Do you want to be found or do you want to hide? No, I don't. First of all, I don't, I'm, I'm not even sure what it was that was loose. I just know that they loosed something it's apparently not very good but i'm haven't sorted out all of that information yet and it i don't why would it be chasing me they could be chasing me because i know their secrets but it oh they are not chasing you they have you it i, I don't uh, it's terrible whatever it it is they are using you don't you know that they have you and they are using you what am I supposed to do? They want to lure it to you. If you want to come out of this alive, you will you will need to make deals. Deals that you really don't want to make. But it will also give you powers and insight. Go now. We will talk again when you are ready. I think I was a bit too early. He makes a motion towards the door with his hand. He wants you to leave. <laughs> I look at him with just almost uh, an angry sort of eye roll. I'm a bit perturbed and then I will turn and walk out. When you walk out of the of the uh, open doorway, you suddenly wake up in your car. The horn gives out a long sound with no end. You remember the crash. You are trapped. Your legs are stuck under the dashboard. A sharp pain and you see the open wounds on your legs and they are tangled up in wires. I want you to roll endure injury. Okay, well that explains that. Fortitude is zero. Let's see. A one and a nine is a ten. You are completely stuck in this uh, virus and uh, you have a serious injury on your legs. You can uh, write it down as one injury. In the other car, the old man looks up over the wheel six feet from you. His front have crashed into your side. He start to move, to get out, but he seems stuck as well. What do you do? Um, I mean, how far away from the gas station am I? Maybe 15, 20 minutes oh. in uh, some of it high speed. Is the car inoperable? No, uh, the side, it's pushed in and you see it's, uh, it's bent uh, really bad. And his car seems stuck in your car. Uh, his front is uh, pushed together uh, like an accordion. The old yellow cab that you didn't think would run at all. Right. Uh, so you think you're stuck in each other's. And even if you get loose, you don't think you're gonna get far in this car again. So they're pretty smashed. Yeah. This is madness. Um, all right, I'm going to get my bag, put my laptop, grab my stuff, get out of the car. You can roll uh, coolness, act under pressure to, to get free from the wires and cables and try to get out. I'm not. Very good at that. Oh, I am today. Uh, 18 minus 2, I have to 16. You get loose from the wires and everything and you get over to the other side and just when you're about to open the car door, the old man is suddenly outside your car on this side. He bangs on the window. Stop it! Don't hurt yourself, damn it! Something have changed. It's the doctor from earlier, from that other room. The other room where you were strapped down on the metal table. He looks close to panic. Stop it for fuck's sake! You will die! Do you open the door? That's Dr. Hall? Yeah. No, I'm going to stop for just a moment and look at him and... He seems scared. You shake your head. Suddenly, you are on the floor in the doctor's office. You see Dr. Hall on the other side of the desk. He seems afraid. You are on the floor. You have a letter opener in your hands. The room is in chaos. 
Everything is thrown around. Your legs hurt. There are blood everywhere. You have stabbed yourself. Not much, you think, but there are older wounds, not fully healed. The door open, two men come in and picks you up. One of them uh, take the letter opener away and they lead you away. The doctor says nothing. Do you say anything? You are, you are somewhat in, in shock. No, I'm not going to say anything. If I have any reason in my mind happening at this moment, I, I, I have to wait and see what happens. I need more information. This is... You're, you are uh, extremely confused. You jump from scene to scene and you, you don't know what's going on. One second you think you have everything in control and then everything is changed. You feel like you are going crazy. You are washed and they tend to your wounds. Then you are locked away in a room. Four white walls, you hear yourself say. There's a bed and a toilet, but nothing else in here. You are in a padded cell. It's strangely clean. After a while, the door opens and Alicia comes in. You remember her. She sits down next to you on the bed. She smiles. Tell me what's wrong. How can we help you? You are confused. You remember, or, or is nothing of it true? The government was involved. But how? Or I'm insane. No. She seems to want to start a conversation with you. I, I, I don't know what's happening right now. You don't? Uh, no. I, I, I thought I was... What do you think uh, was, is happening to you, Dad? I was at my computer, mm -hmm. and then I got scared, and I panicked. And I grabbed my stuff, and I got in the car, and I drove off. And, and then I'm in the uh, driving in a desert, and... Yeah, the desert. Uh, we have talked about this before, Dan. The desert. Uh, there's no desert close to here. Where? What desert? <laughs> Forget it. I'm gonna need some help. Yeah, you're gonna get it. That's why you are here. When did I get here? No, uh, let's see, almost uh, two months ago. Don't you remember? Has anybody come asking for me? Yeah, uh, a girl, Victoria. Did she see me? Not... I don't remember seeing her. No, not not yet. Dr. Hall uh, doesn't want you to see anyone before we can, we can help you a little. You, you keep hurting yourself, Dan. That's not good. Why do you do that? I don't do this. They do this. Who? The... The creatures. Uh, the people from the other side. The creatures? What do you mean by that? I, I, I really want to help you, Dan, but it's hard. Yeah. You, you were just in Dr. Hall's office, stabbing yourself with a letter opener. Don't you remember that? No, I don't remember that. And you say it... It's the creatures. Can you tell me how they look? What are they? All right. So, for instance, I was just speaking to this thing that was, you know, uh, eight feet tall, sounded like my dad, had some other person's face hooked over a skull and arms wrapped in barbed wire. And yet he's claiming to be my long lost father. Go on. And then some in some new sort of, uh, you know, body. See? So that's one of the creatures. Okay. Right? That I just saw, like, just right before you came in the room, actually. Mm. You talked about an old man who got eaten. Yeah. Yeah. And those, uh, so I've told you about that already. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have talked many times. Don't you remember, Dan? You have been here almost uh, 60 days. This, this, this can't be. Yeah. Well, when did you leave your home? Wasn't it uh, early May? Do you remember? Well, yeah. What day is it now? It's July. July the 5th. <laughs> you said something about uh, other subjects, metal tables, and you said that we were torturing you. Do you remember that? I remember something about... Uh... I was strapped to a, a steel table, you know, like from the movies. Only it wasn't the big, bright operating room. It was a little bit dimmer than that. And there were lots of tables and bodies, people strapped to them. Mm. Can you describe any of the others? 
do you remember any any faces? I, I think some of them are familiar. I was. It's like I'm flashing back and forth between all these scenes. You said that we've already talked about that. To me, that just happened just a little while ago, before in between deserts. And I think there were some people I know, but I can't remember who they were. Okay. You think it happened just now, today, or? Uh, yeah. What do you mean, yesterday, or? Like it, it just happened in May. But to you, it's today, or? Well, yeah, but in my head, I, I left my house yesterday. Okay. If, if even yesterday. Okay. So you, you think it's just been one day? Uh, Have you been medicating me? Just the normal, normal medicines. Nothing heavy, just uh, to calm you down. Uh, after all, you have been hurting yourself and others. Do you remember the gas station? Yes. What did you do there? Well, I hid from those monsters. The crawling ones? Yeah, that ate the old man. Mm, the one that uh, they ate. The one without eyes. Yes. The one you you say tried to to eat you as well, but you hid, you hid in a car, or or was it in the gas station? Yellow, yellow cab actually. Oh, at the gas station. All oh, right, right. Well, I know Doctor Hall have uh, have spoken to Victoria, and she will uh, she will uh, visit you. I think tomorrow or the next day, uh, if you are good. If you don't hurt yourself anymore, can you can you promise me that you won't do that? Yeah, uh, I'll, 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 um, yeah, I'll make that promise. I'm sorry. I, I don't even remember doing it that time. You even tried to. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't speak about it, but don't you even remember trying to poke your eye out? Um, no, I don't remember that either. But I can't say after a day that I'm surprised. Uh, this is ridiculous. Uh, like, in this very moment, this is the best I think I've felt for I, I don't even remember how long, I guess, in the last couple of months. And when I have this lucid moment only to find out I'm locked up in an institution, this is, this is great. This is, um, what about all my, who's, who's taking care of my stuff? Where is my stuff? My computer. I'm gonna, Uh, yeah. You've had me here two months with no computer. I don't. I don't yeah. see. I, that's why I don't believe it. I, I absolutely don't believe it. No wonder I'm stabbing myself. You want your computer? I don't know where your where your things are, but you will get them back when you're feeling better, of course. But uh, at the moment, we can't let you have anything that you can use to hurt yourself or no, just letter openers. Yeah, that's uh, that was a mistake. I'm very sorry for that. I will talk to Dr. Hall about that. So, are you ready to have a dinner? Uh, yeah, starved. Yeah, you're feeling a bit better? Um, Alicia, right? Yeah, that's me. Um, no, uh, I mean, in some ways, yeah, I feel a little bit better. But uh, overall, no, I'm going to be looking for letter openers. Let's talk more tomorrow. They will come with your dinner soon. You have a good night and, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Sleep tight, Dan. Yeah. She leaves the room and you are alone in that room, confused, but you remember all the different scenes and all the craziness, but you don't remember anything from this room or this building at all. I almost don't even, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm here. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the scene to change again. I'm waiting for this to be not real because... Do you want to try to see, see something or change something? on your own or are you just sitting there waiting? I'm just sitting here waiting, trying to rationalize what's going on. A few hours pass. That night you fall asleep. It feels like it was ages ago you slept. You had a late dinner, or at least you think it was late. You didn't realize how hungry you were before they brought it to you. An orderly was in your room the whole time, and you was only allowed a rubber spoon. You still hear Alicia's words, and you feel somewhat safe. The rest feels like a dream. Maybe it was. You sleep and you dream. You are home on Pine Street in your house, Jersey City. Vicky are next to you in the sofa. You watch a movie, she say. 
Remember that you promised to come with me to the doctor's office tomorrow. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, of course. She says it probably more to remind herself. We have to be there at nine. You look at her. She's much younger than you. Who is she? You know her, but you can't remember. You concentrate on the movie. It's an old one with Harvey Winston in the lead role. You remember that you like this movie. Vicky seems to want to talk, but you're not sure what to say. What do you do? I immediately think that this is not reality. It feels like a dream, and you drift off. You hear a wiki talking, then it's quiet. The scene changes, and we go back in time. You don't know how far back, weeks, maybe months. You are at the gas station. The desert is gone. It's evening. You are somewhere near Morristown, according to the signs. A woman in black is in the background, always in the background. As you turn to look at her, she's gone, then back again. You can't focus on her. There's something dark around you. It eats you up. At first you panic, then you become angry. You see people fleeing out from the gas station. The clerk hides behind the desk, then he come up again. You see a gun, a revolver. He shoots at you. You attack. In complete frenzy, you must kill him, that's what the voice say, and you obey. You are completely mad, and all you want to do is destroy this place and the clerk. When he comes up with that gun, I'm going to just dive over the counter at him and wrestle the gun from his hand. Yeah, you're gonna do a counterattack. Roll, engage in combat. Uh, 13, 12. 12? Uh, you come over and you, you inflict damage on him, uh, you wrestle a gun from him, a, f a few shots goes off but uh, nothing connects with you. you. You have the gun in your hand, he's afraid, he backs up against the wall, you're in a complete rage. Once I have the gun in my hand, I'm not even sure I let him get all the way up and I'm gonna shoot him in the head. You shoot him, uh, you're very close to him so you don't have to roll, you just shoot him. And you, you feel, you feel excitement like you never have felt before. It's like uh, as if you were a child the first time in Disney World and you have tickets to all the rides. Yeah, well look at him, the blood. You gotta make sure that there's no one else in this place. So I'm gonna get up and I'm just gonna clear the counter of all of this stuff and throw it all on the floor. And then look around for a moment. Is there anybody else in here? You see the woman in black in a corner, but as you look at her, she's gone. She seems to smile at you. You feel friendly towards her, but nothing else. You want to destroy the store. That's exactly what I'm going to do. She'll like watching this, and I'm gonna start going down the aisles, smashing everything. If it's glass, I'm picking it up and making special care to smash it on the floor. Might even shoot a couple of the cooler doors. You're having a, a great time there. You don't know how long you keep going, but you stay in the in the store and you, you destroy everything you can. And you remember fighting with cops, being subdued by stun guns and more. You remember the woman in black always in the background, watching you, smiling. They drag you into a car in handcuffs and you are being thrown in jail. The next day, a Dr. Hall comes to get you. They drive you to a Bergen Asylum in Jersey City, where they put you in a padded cell. You haven't even made a phone call. They drug you. The days flow together. They do things to you. You are afraid all the time. Throughout the halls, abysses and galleries of steel. On operating tables, helpless victims are vivisected time and time again. Their blood splashing over the tile walls, in trails torn out and thrown to the cement floor with a wet thud. Upon altars of marble, children are flayed alive by leering nephrites. 
while their parents are forced to watch, only to then be forced to skin their loved ones themselves, drag deeper and deeper down into madness. In thundering machine halls, rusty drills are driven into weeping, praying sinners, while priests hold mass and collect the shed blood in golden vessels. Delicate gossamer, mirage tremble in the silent catacombs, echoing whispers of still existent hope, tenderness and love, only to dissolve like fog in the darkness. Naked purgatides impale their victim on skewers, drown them in waste oil, or burn off their faces with blow torches. Those waiting their turn listen to the screams and caress each other into ecstasy, searching in vain for some respite from the agony. The vestals of pain create works of art from peeled skin and viscera under black stone arcs, while bawling infants are eaten alive by insects crawling at their feet. Thank you for listening to The Experiment, a Cult Divinity Lost actual play podcast from TTRP Theater featuring Peter Samuelson, Minta Krikomi, and myself, Curtis Wilkins. The game, Cult Divinity Lost, is produced by Homecast. Music used in this episode is thanks to Koak and Incompetech. Find our other stories live on Twitch or later on YouTube. Podcasts are available on multiple platforms. If you like what you heard today and would like to help support and improve TTRP Theater, visit our Patreon page today. Benefits start for as little as $1. Thanks again from Minta. Peter, and myself, and all of us here at TTRP Theater.